minute? <laughs> yes, we'll see just one minute, everyone. <laughs> yes. Now, yes, now you can hear me, right? No issues. Awesome, everyone. I think now I'm completely audible. So I welcome you again. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the class. Welcome to your own channel of 6, 7th and 8th. And I'm your teacher, Ankita. And in today's class, we will be discussing about the questions from the Science Olympiad for class 6. So I hope that all of you are ready for an amazing session. Good evening. So I was taking name of these students, right? And so many of you are here. See, your teacher is definitely really very happy and a smiley for all of us. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Madan, Nazrana, Jha, Tane, Aisha, Seema, Anjali, Nisha, Ashif, Rutja, Mahi, Devanshu, Aditya, Duba. Okay, I missed your name, I guess. Sonu, Roshni, Prachi. Tanishk, BTS forever, Manya. So many of you are here. We don't have Menti, uh, Tane. Hi, Anushri. Hi, Mona and Dolly. Hi, Reena. Hi, Tanishk. Hi, Sony. Welcome, Rituja. Welcome to the class. I am good. Thank you, everyone. I hope that all of you are also good. So I hope that you can see me clearly and can hear me clearly. Yes? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Yes, hello, SST and bio teacher. Yes. Awesome. I'm sure that you can hear me clearly. So let's start our session, right? So as from the title, we can see that we will be discussing the questions from the Science Olympiad, right, which came in the previous year, right? And of course, these are the Olympiad questions, right? So of course, we have taken these questions from the textbooks. Now, these are really very interesting questions and we will try to solve them in today's class. Right? So I hope that all of you are ready. Yay! Show some energy in the chat box. Hit the like button. Hit the like button, everyone, so that we can start our session. And in the chat box, you can show the smileys. Ranjit, sir, can we have a, a poll in the chat? Is it possible? Okay, so we will have the polls. Yes, on your request, sir also agrees. So we'll have the questions and we'll have the options so you can vote. Okay, great. With that, everyone, let's start. But before we start, I'm sure that all of you are participating. And I'm sure all of you are coming to the classes for the ANTE examination, right? So it's for class 7 to 12th. We are, we are uh, having classes, right? Where we're discussing the exam pattern. We're doing lots and lots of questions for the ANTE examination. So I hope that you have registered for the examination. The link of the session is in the description below. Register yourself now. A very, very important examination. So don't forget to register. On that note, everyone. Hi. Hi, Ruchi. Hi, Sarang. Hi, Jha. Indu. Yes. So let's start, everyone. Aditi, all the best. Yes, Mohit. Hi. Okay, everyone. Here we go for a very first question. Sir, are we ready with the polls? Can we have the polls in a minute? Yes. So we'll have, sir, we'll have th four options, sir. We can change it. We'll have A, B, C, D options. Yes, everyone. Okay. So here we have a question till the time, sir, will fix, right? We'll have the polls. Let me read the question for you. Manisha took some vinegar. Now, everyone focus over here. Yes. Yes, Roshni, it's a very dicey question. So definitely, right, as I teach bio, I love bio. Uh, till my standard 10th, uh, I had SST. And I was teaching SST in the school when I was teaching bio also. So both are equally lovable subject to me. Yes. Okay. So what we have over here, let's see. We have Manisha, right? Cholo, cholo, we'll have this. We have Manisha. She took some vinegar in the test tube and added some baking soda to it. Then she lit a matchstick and brought it near to the mouth of the test tube. The flame of the matchstick got extinct. But basically, the flame was not growing, right? Basically, it just stopped burning. So, out of 
these options, we have to pick the correct conclusion. What is the correct explanation for this particular experiment? The options are carbon dioxide gas does not stop burning, right? Carbon dioxide gas does not stop burning. Air contains carbon dioxide. Oxygen gas present in the air is necessary for the burning. And oxygen gas can extinguish the fire, basically stop the fire. What do you think? What is a, which of the following is a correct conclusion? Yes, carbon dioxide support or it isn't support. Okay, let's see. I am sure there is some confusion. See over here, the experiment. We have added the right baking soda in the vinegar. Now we know that when we add the baking soda into the vinegar, it will react, right? And it will produce, which gas can you tell me? It will produce which gas? It will produce CO2. Right, it will produce the CO2. And we know that if we add the, right, if we, if we are not adding the solution also, but if we take this tube, right, close to this tube, what will happen? There is CO2, right? And we know that CO2 does not support the burning. So, in that case, option number C will not be the correct answer. Option number B will not be the correct answer. Option number D will also not be the correct answer. The correct answer will be option A. Are you clear with that? See, carbon dioxide, we know that will not be supporting the burning. That's why the candle flame, right, will stop. Clear? It's a very tricky question, right? We thought that maybe C could be the right answer. Yes? So the question is asking that which gas, when we, you know, which, which of these gases, right, that I have mentioned here, if we take that gas close to the burning candle, what will happen? Yes. Very good, crystal clear. Yes, we will have the poll in a minute. In a minute. Yes. Great. Okay, are you ready for question number two? Come on, come on, come on. Are you ready for the question number two? Awesome. Very good, everyone. Here we go to question number two. And everyone, as we are solving these questions, we are moving actually closer and closer to the difficult questions and we are moving a little bit closer to clearing out the or getting full marks in Olympiads. So here we have, we have the following statement. Now we have to read the statement Aram say. Let's read the statement. First statement, the ozone layer is present in the troposphere. Second statement, density of, yeah, we have the poles now. So, you will see on the chat, right? The density of the air decreases with increasing altitude. Option 3 is that air, uh, sorry, statement 3 is that air is an element that surrounds the earth and make it hospital for living organism. And 4, exosphere is an uppermost layer of the atmosphere. You have to pick the correct statement. Out of these 4 statements, which statement are correct? We have the four options, right? One and two statement, second and one statement. So pick one correct answer, everyone. We have the polls, right? I know the correct answer. 36% of you as of now, now 44, now 44. The percentage is increasing. Everyone quickly vote. Read the statement correctly. We will be having a discussion on this particular question, but I want you to read the statement correctly and then answer. We know ozone layer is really very important and it actually provides us the protection from the harmful UV radiation where it is present. That's a very important question. Density of the air decreases the amount of density. For example, we have a lot more amount of the air at the lower altitude as compared to the higher altitude. Then air is an element that's around the earth and of course because of that only living organisms are possible, can easily live or the last one. Exosphere is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere. And according to the polls, I think all of us have voted so we can end the poll. Seems like oh, ha, ha. option B is a correct answer. And all of you are correct. Let's see how. The ozone layer is present in the stratosphere. Yes or no, everyone? Yes, it is present in the stratosphere. 
exosphere is definitely the outermost layer, not right the uppermost layer, we would say. So the statement 4 is definitely true. Statement 1 is wrong. Yes, density of the air decreases with increased altitude. As we go higher and higher in altitude, what will happen? The amount of air present will be less. Right? Yes, everyone. Very good. So, statement 2 is definitely correct. Now, air is an element. Is it an element or it's a mixture? Right? We call it air as a mixture. Right? So, option statement 2 is, sorry, statement 3 is also incorrect. So, here we have the correct answer. The outermost layer is the exosphere. Then we have thermosphere, mesosphere. Then we have the stratosphere where we have the ozone. And of course, we have the troposphere, right? Which is just very close to our atmosphere. Like basically our earth. Yes, air is a, not an element. It's a mixture of gases. Very good. So are we clear everyone with this? Yes. And the correct answer is option number B. Yeah, we did it. I hope that you have enjoyed this question. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. I can see so many yes and let's quickly move to the next question. Get ready everyone. Here we go. We have to solve this question really very quickly. Here we have. We have the given table that shows the characteristic features of the herbs, shrubs and the trees. Basically different types of plants. Which of the following points is incorrect? You have to look for the answer which is incorrect. The points which are incorrect. Okay. So here we have features. We have the poles also going. We have the features. First we are talking about the size. Herbs are usually very small. Right. Less height they have. Shrubs medium size. Trees tall. Then we have nature of stem. Herbs have thinner green color stem. Shrubs have a little bit thicker stem. And the trees over here they have mentioned have not very thick stem. Branches arise from the base of the stem. Okay. Example they have mentioned grass, tomato, wheat, hibiscus, lemon, rose, jasmine, gulmohar, neem and people. Among these everyone which of is the incorrect option? First tell me are you clear with the question? Yes. See we will be taking some time to read the option because it's a lengthy question. Tell me everyone, are you clear with the question? Yes, so in the question what we have, we have three different types of plants, right? We have the herbs, shrubs and the trees. We know that herbs are those tiny plants, right? They have very soft stem, right? Tulsi is an example, grass, right? All of these very, very sweet, small little plants, mint, right? Then we have shrubs like they will be a little bit taller. They have a little bit thick stem. Yes, hibiscus. Lemon is an example for that. Then we have big trees, right? Which have very, very thick stem. So I hope that you have picked your option. I can see option number B getting more marks. Let's end the poll and let's see whether it's correct or not. Very good, very good. Seems like option B got 40%. Let's find the answer. So here we have. And we are absolutely correct. Anishka, I am good. I hope that you are also good. Here we have. So, herbs. This is definitely correct for herbs, right? They are very small. Shrubs, medium high. Trees, tall. So this is definitely right. Examples are also correct. This part, nature of stem is wrong, right? See over here, they have mentioned hard stem but not very thick. We know that trees have thick stem. So this option is wrong, which is the B over here. So here we have the correct option. Second only is the wrong one. I'm super proud of you everyone. So it was a very difficult question. See, very difficult question to understand and to find the answer. But you guys did it. <laughs> Claps everyone. Yes, claps for all of us because we are doing super amazing. Yes, right everyone. So with lots of energy, we have finished the question number three. We have seven more questions to go. Okay, we'll start now for the next question. Yes, 
let's go ahead to the question of four. We can wait for polls. Sir. One minute, then we'll have the polls. See over here, we have the question. Yes, we have some graph for a question. Let's see if we can make it easy. Right? So let's see over here. The given graph represents how three different living organisms X, Y, Z will cope up with their external environment condition. We have to study the graph and then select the correct option regarding X, Y and Z. So first let's understand the question. Right first let's understand the question. In the question you can see the graph we have internal level and the external level and we are talking about the external environment. So we have three animals or organisms X, Y and Z. Now what hap what is the thing? They, that how they will be responding to the external condition. For example, you and me, right? If we feel cold, what we'll do? Yes, BTS forever, please write your doubt. That's very good, Mohit. Is it? That's very good, Atul. Please write your doubt, uh, BTC forever, if you have. Yes, what do you think everyone? Now what you will do if you have, right, if you have a little bit cold, for example, if there's a really very cold outside, what we'll do, you'll actually wear some jackets, right? Yes, we'll wear the sweaters. Yes. So what we, what in then, that we will be men, trying to maintain our body temperature. Aditya, internal and the external level means that our external conditions, maybe it is cool or warm, we will try to maintain our body temperature, right? We will try to maintain our body temperature. But there are other animals like reptiles, like amphibians, they actually change their body temperature according to their atmosphere. Yes, Chirayu, got your point, right? Are you clear with that? See, we call them like warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals, right? Very good, I can see the answers. Mammals are the, mammals are us, right? Mammals and birds have a very special power to actually maintain their inner temperature. They will not be changing according to the external condition. Yes, I'll explain. So according to that, can we have the polls now? I'm sure you have the answer with you. So I'll explain you BTS forever. Mammals, right? Mammals are the group of organisms that have memory glands. They give birth to the young one, right? They feed the young one. They carry the young one inside their body, right? And they have memory glands. Then, of course, they can actually maintain their body temperature. Very, very important thing. The same thing happens in birds also, right? But birds, of course, lay eggs. So, we have to identify what is X, Y and Z. See, if you look at the graph over here, the X graph goes from like this. So that means the internal body condition, external body condition as it changes, internal body condition is also changing, right? So this cannot be, so what could be the X? In Y, you see that whatever be the condition, it is staying stable, static, right? And in S, Z, we can see it is changing. So then we have to find out, X could be a mammal, X is this. Do you think it could be a mammal? After our discussion, do you think that it could, it could be the mammal? Yes, everyone? Please, Muni, write it out. Very good. I can see the correct answer. Yes. 49 of you have voted for the correct answer. So the X, definitely we know that could not be a mammal. X could not be a mammal because we can see it is changing its body temperature. Internal level is changing as the external level changes. So X could not be mammal. First one is incorrect. X could be a bird. We just now discussed that. Bird can also maintain their body temperature. So option number D is also incorrect. Z could be a fish. Could be. But it cannot be this level, right? So the correct answer would be that Y could be a bird. This is absolutely correct because it is maintaining its body temperature. Yes, Moni, please write your doubt. Rather than writing, but you have a doubt, please write it out. Write the question, I will answer it. 
Very good everyone. With that we know that the correct answer to this is Y could be a bird. Yay! It was a difficult question everyone. Let's pat on our back. We did super amazing. Yes, are we clear everyone? Come on, come on. How's the energy in the class? Yes. Very good. Good, good, good everyone. Very good. Now that we are clear with this, I have a very easy question for you. I'm sure you will answer this question really very quickly. Here we have, which of the following is a mismatch pair? Look at the pair and then of course we'll have the poles running. Look at the pairs, fibrous roots, wheat and maize. Parallel venation, banana and sugarcane. Reticulate venation, mustard and hibiscus or the creepers, watermelon and pea plant. You have to find a mismatch pair. Three are collect correctly paired with each other. There's one which is mismatch. We have to find that and we can have the poles now. Yes, look at the options carefully everyone. Then we will discuss the answer. We have fibrous roots. We have parallel venation. We have reticulate venation. And then we have the creepers. 45 of you have actually voted for the correct answer. We don't have menti. Sindhu Bhai, we don't have menti today. How to represent a graph, Munni? So usually what happens in the examination, you will see that there will be x and y axis, right? So they will mention what is there, right? Sometime, if you have to draw a graph, in the question they would mention that what will be there on the x axis and what will be there on the y axis. Okay, so based upon that from the question, we can represent the graph. Very good. Okay, I think we can end the poll because all of you have guessed the correct answer. Hello. Yes. And the correct answer is option number D. We know that fibrous roots are like this, right? They have lots and lots of small, small roots arising. Fibrous roots are present in the monocots, right? which are wheat and maize. Parallel venation are there in the banana, right? Because on the banana leaf, we will see that the veins will run parallel to each other. Yes, and in reticulate venation, we will see leaves like this, right? And they will have the, this venation, right? They will not be exactly parallel, but they will have these net-like pattern which we usually see in the dicot plants. Yes, everyone. And the creepers, of course, we have the watermelon, but the pea plant is a climber, as you have mentioned. Very good, Aditya. Yes. So here we have the representation of the watermelon. See over here. And we have the pea plant, which is usually take a support of another plant or a stake or a wall. Pea plant is a climber. Watermelon is a creeper. And here we have the correct answer. No issues, Chitra. Welcome to the class. Hi, Suzy. Very good, Aisha, Anjali, Atif. Ten question, Atif, we have. Very good, Munni. Yes, Ruchi, you are saying that? No, but Olympiad and Anthe are not related. They are a different examination. Very good, Manya. Very good, Aisha. Very good. Mr. Very good. Suzanne. Yes. We will, I use we will. Okay. Dodaba, I'm sorry, your name is really very big, but hi. Shall we? Very good. Aditya, okay. Good, good, good. Vasu, I hope that your exam was good. Okay. Chalo, everyone. Question number six. We are halfway through. Halfway through, and we are on question number six. Indu, please write your doubt if you have any. I will answer your question. Here we, everyone. Again, a very big question. Let's see this. Okay, we'll have a poll in a minute, but let's read the question. Uh, BTS forever, there are 10 questions. We are in question number 6 now. Suman categorize organism on the basis of their habitat. What is habitat? Quickly everyone write in the chat box. What is habitat? I'll count till 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's understand the question. 
See, we have the organisms, right, uh, which are based, uh, Suman is categorizing these animals on the base of places where they live. Very good, Purnima. Their natural place where they live. She made an error, right, and by mistake, she played one member odd, right. Out of these three lists, there is one member in each of these which are kind of odd, right. We have to identify the odd member of each group and select the incorrect statement. So over here below we have four statements A, B, C and D. We have to pick the incorrect statement. I will move aside so, so that you can read the correct statement, right? Sorry, the statements. In group 1, we have Arctic Fox, Penguin, Macau. Group 2, we have Kangaroo Rat, Rattlesnake and Weasel. Group 3, we have Tukon, Gorilla and Polar Bear. I hope that you got it right now. Read it properly and then answer. Now the polls is up everyone. Pick the correct option. I know it's confusing but let's try. Then of course you will have the understanding also. I know it will be difficult. See, Suman made three different categories, right? Of the animals. By mistake, she have placed one odd member. If you look at these, right? Group 1, Group 2 and Group 3. These are animals that are found in different habitat. Some of them are polar regions, some of them are in deserts, some of them are in a terrestrial land and some of them are in the, you know, very harsh climates. So we have to read the statement A, B, C and D. And we have to think which of these is incorrect. I can see some answers right quickly everyone. Yes. Very good, very good. And let's end the poll, right? Let's end the poll. I think it's a bit of confusion over here. Okay. So D, co, I think A got more points and then we have D. So let's understand. Okay, tell me how many of you have actually understood the question. Right? Please raise your hand. How many of you understood the question? And if you have difficulty, let's focus over here. Come on, come on. It's a very interesting question. Very, very interesting question. It's okay. You, you don't have to say sorry, Suzanne. We will be understanding now. Okay? And I want your support. Okay. Even I got it a little bit later. Yes? Chalo, let's understand this question together. So let's suppose we are Suman. Right? We have made a category of the animals. One, two, three. I want you help, so give me a thumbs up if you get it. So we are Suman, we made the category of group 1 animal, group 2 animal and group 3 animal. We added the animal's name into it. Right? See over here we have Arctic Fox and Penguin. We know that these animals live in a colder region. Yes or no? Yes? We know that Arctic Fox and the Penguin live in the colder region. Macau is a parrot, basically a type of parrot, right? Okay, Mani Kant, cool, right? So this is definitely an odd animal. I'm putting a cross onto it, okay? Now in group 2, we have kangaroo rat and we have rattlesnake. We know that these animals are found in the desert, right? These are found in the deserts. And then we have weasel, which is a, not a desert animal but is usually found in a green place right where there's a green land so this is also a wrong animal then we have to go on i'm sure you must have seen this right a black bird with a very beautiful peak yellowish orangish peak to corn right and gorilla they're found in the tropical forest very green forest right and then we have polar bear which is definitely not found in the forest. Got it? Are we clear with the question first everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Awesome. Right? You got the question. Now let's read the statement. So the question is Macau which is a parrot in group 1. Can we replace it with polar bear of group 3? If we do that, yes it will be a correct set. But we are looking for incorrect one. 
So this cannot be our answer. Weasel of group 2, right? Should we interchange with Tukon over here? We can, right? That will not be any harm to us. Polar bear of group 3. Polar bear of group 3. Can we change it with the uh, with red eye fox? Yes, we can do that. It will be correct said. See, I'm sure you must have seen the red eye frog, right? They have those, you know, uh, very sticky palms. They can just crawl like this. Yes, very good. So this statement is also correct. Now we have Macau of group 1. Can we replace it with reindeer? How many of you know what is reindeer? They have very big horns, right? I'm sure in the Christmas movies we usually see this animal. It is an animal which is found in the colder region. So if we change Macau with the reindeer, it will be a correct statement. Yes. So the only statement which is not making any sense to us, which is absolutely incorrect, is B option. Okay? Are we clear? I'll explain you again if you don't get it. See, we have different types of habitat. Right? We have terrestrial, we have polar, desert and savannas. Yes, yes. Okay. Hi, Manvi. How to register for ch uh, Chitra? There is a session that we did, Bache. Right? It is a con uh, this examination is conducted by the government. Your school must be registered with it. Then, then you will be able to apply. You can watch a session, right? Or uh, which we have on the channel, and then you can apply. Yes. Okay, Manvi. Got it. Very good, Meera. Welcome. Yay! Are we clear, everyone? So this is the correct option. I hope that you got the answer. Kanti, terrestrial means bachche, the animals that are there on the land. Yes? Clear? Which habitat I like most? I think the tropical rainforest. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Clear everyone? Are you clear with this? Now I know that the questions are a little bit trickier. But I hope that you are not losing. Right? I hope that you have your confidence. Okay, Radhya. Yes. Are we clear? Welcome, Mihra. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see question number seven, everyone. Yes, question number seven. Now, it's a trickier one. We have how many statements? We have five statements and we have to match whether they are true or whether they are false. Okay. Adriti, please write your doubt, Bachche. Please write your doubt. I'll be able to answer. All the best, Roshni. Yes, I know we have that. Okay. Everyone, so I'll give you some time. Read the statement and then we'll have the polls running and we'll discuss. So we have to find the options A, B, C, D, which have the correct answer for the true or false. Read the statement, everyone. Now let's have the poll. Okay. Read the statement and pick it from here. Can I tell you a trick over here? Go for at least first. Read the first statement. Identify whether it's true or it's false. Based upon that, we'll be able to find. If first is true, so you can let go of option number C or B. Or if A, the first statement is false. So you can eliminate option A and D. Yes, Teju, please ask the question. Come on, come on, everyone. I can see 50% of you have voted for the option. Very good, very good. For now, 46. No, Ruchi, nobody will be calling you. If you register for anti examination, right? Uh, if you register for anti examination, you will be picking your own dates, right? The process is really, very really simple. Ashwarya ma'am did a session, right? You can watch it for your better understanding. Right? It's a very simple process, Bachche. Yes, Sakshi. I can see. What is polar habitat? Of course, the animals that live in the polar region, which is a very cold region. Okay? Okay, I can see. So many correct answers. Now let's discuss this question. Parvinder, we have a session, Bachche, where we have discussed in detail about the anthocyanobus. Please, you can watch that session. Okay, now I can see 
I think the polls is off. And let's see what is the correct answer. 65 of you, 60 percentage, sorry, 65 percentage of you have voted for the correct answer. Yes. Okay, let's see this. The first statement, everyone. What is the first statement? The number of sepals and petals in a flower are always same. We know that they are not same. Sepals are those small bud-like structures, like the small green leaf-like structures, which are there. And petals are beautiful, bright colored one. They are never same in number. So, of course, they are false, right? It is false. Now, see over here. Between A, B, C and D, we can see that only in two options, B and C, the first one is false. So, we can eliminate A and eliminate D. Easy, right? Now, this is how you have to solve the question in the examination, everyone. Yes? Now, slit roots grow downwards and provide support to the plants. Now, they are very strong roots, right? They go deep down and they provide the support to the plant. It is definitely true. So, now we have this, okay, this also. So, B and C have the same thing. Now, it's the third one. Calyx form the innermost whorl. We know that it's not. Calyx, the other name is the corolla. Sorry. Sorry, the calyx, other name is sepals. So, we know that it is false. So, third ka false we have over here. So, we know that option B is correct. Yes? Are we clear? Yes, yes, yes. So, what we have to do over here, we have to match. And then we have to see where they are matching. Leaf tendrils are found in the... Glorissa plant and sweet pea plant, which is definitely true over here. Now we know that they are true. And calyx and corolla are essential. They form the essential world, which is false. So let's see the answer. Now I have this beautiful flower. Yes, I can see. I can see you have doubts. See, can you see this green part, everyone? These are sepals. Or also called as the calyx, right? Yes. Very good. Can you see this beautiful pink color? What we call it as? We call it them as the petals or the other name is corolla. Right? Then these are the two non-essential world. They are not so important. We call them as non-essential world. Then comes the two essential world which are the male and the female reproductive system. The innermost is the Gynosium, the female reproductive system, right in the flower. And then we have the androsium. Right, androsium and gynosium. Clear? So the innermost, innermost world in the female, uh, in the flower is the gynosium, the female reproductive system of flower. Clear? Yes, 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 everyone, I hope that you got it. Uh, I know, Kanti, it is out of syllabus, but in the Olympiad questions, they will be asking you questions like this. Very good. Tendrils, uh, Mohan, we will talk. See over here, these are the tendrils. Can you see this? So basically, they are those curvy structures that actually provide us a little bit of support and they are there. Can you see? Gloriosa plant is also called as the fire lilies. Okay. This is how they look. And they have these tendrils. Can you see this part? This part. Over here we have this part. These are the tendrils that actually help in taking a little bit of support. And over here we have sweet pea plant. Right? Clear everyone? Clear, clear, clear? Yes? So the correct answer is option number B. So it will require a little bit of time from your side. A little bit time from your side to read the question and to understand. Anjali, the innermost whorl of the flower is the gynosium, which is the female reproductive part. So, Zain, by with the time, you will be able to understand. Rekha, I'll repeat it again for you. Okay? So, in a flower... Rekha, see over here, Bache. It's a very important, everyone. If you have any confusion in the parts of the flower, it's time for us to focus over here. Right? In flower, we have four important worlds. Can you quickly repeat one of the four important worlds? Rekha, especially for you. Four important worlds. We have sepals. We have carpels. Sorry, we have sepals. 
We have petals, right? We have androsium and we have gynosium, right? Androsium is male reproductive part which have anther and filament. Gynosium have female reproductive part which includes stigma, style and ovary, right? Sepals are the green part over here which is called as calyx and the petals are the beautiful bright colors which are called as the corolla. Carpals uh, in though includes a female reproductive part which includes the stigma, style and the ovary. All of these three together is also called as the carpal, anther and filament together is also called as the stamen. Clear everyone? You can take a screenshot of this. Very good. Very good everyone. Very good. Pistil is also called. Absolutely correct. We call it as a pistil also. Clear, clear, clear. Very good. Okay, now let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Here we go. This question is done and now we are on to question number 8. Are you ready everyone? Yes? Are you ready everyone? So the question is, select the option in a correct sequence of the word to fill in the blanks. Now we have this right, deficiency of vitamin C. Tell you, tell me what will be the answer? What the, what of the deficiency of vitamin C will cause in a body? Yes, come on, come on. So basically you have to fill in the blanks over here. We have four and you have to pick from A, B, C and D. In the first, what it will be there. Second, what it will be there. Third and fourth. Again, important thing over here to solve such kind of question is to find out the correct answer for first one. We know that deficiency of vitamin C causes the scurvy in the body. And we can see the scurvy option in option number B and option number D. So option number A and option number D, sorry, option number C are not, will not consider them. Yes, we will not consider them. Okay. First answer is the scurvy. Second, carrot and pumpkins are a rich source of which vitamin? How many of you love eating carrots? Right? How many of you love eating carrots? And doctors and parents will always tell you, if you want your eyes to be super healthy, right? To fight the night blindness, we should be eating vitamin A. Right? Vitamin A, the carrot, right? Carrot and pumpkin are a rich source of vitamin A. So over here we have, so we can say that option number B is correct. Then we have plagra, right, is caused by the deficiency of vitamin B3, which is obvious. And if an individual have a deficiency of vitamin D, rickets will be caused in the individual. So option B is the correct answer. Very easy, right? Here I suppose to solve, but yeah. Option number B. It was an easy question or a tough question? Come on everyone, what do you think? It was an easy question or a tough question? Yeah, B is correct. Got it right? Very easy. Nice. It was an easy question, right? Easy, easy. Good. Easy peasy. It's okay Aisha, but now you know the, now you know the correct answer. Yes, for your ANTHE examination, when you write your mobile number, right, you will get an OTP. Once you register, you will get your roll number. That you need to remember and of course they will give the password. Very good. Okay, question number 9 everyone and this is a trickier question. Okay, can you see what we have on the screen? Yes, can you see what we have, the, we have on the screen? We have X, Y and Z. This is protective food. Here we are talking about the food, right? Here we are talking about the food. The question is protective food. A food that gives us protection to our body, right? If it's no, right? It provides the energy. It could be X. So X food is providing the energy to our body. Yes? Okay, now you tell me which component of the food provides energy to our body? We have five important components, right? Four important components. 
which provide energy to our body yes uh, please write your problem oh you are asking my, my favorite meme very good carbs and fats absolutely correct so the eggs could be carbs or it could be fats because they provide the energy very good now we have to pick the incorrect statement among these now uh, okay tell me are you aware about organic and inorganic elements yes everyone are you aware about organic and inorganic elements if you know please tell me yes if you don't know i will explain you yes okay i can see a few yes and few no so let me explain organic elements will have the oxygen sorry will have the carbon and the hydrogen like carbohydrates right we have so much more into it so right organic in organic we have the carbon and the hydrogen yes and in the in organic we will have the minerals right which it could be like iron etc etc okay so clear with this so in organic substance no y is not an inorganic element z is an organic element now we have to read these statement a b c and d and then we have to find out kanti organic elements will have carbon and hydrogen right they will be the there and then we have the inorganic element but like iron others aisha and ruchi i'm not ignoring you munni i'm really sorry i think you mentioned your name but i forgot your name um i can see your messages but please write the problem right then i'll be able to address it yes okay everyone come on see i am not ignoring any one of you you all are equal lovable cute bachchas for me yes please uh, we can see the polls right very good very good if you want just quickly vote everyone very good dashrath welcome to the class yes sohani quickly vote everyone and then we'll see so this question is trickier because we have to identify x y and z see uh, for example i'm sure that you must have seen ke acha i don't want to eat paneer today okay what is other option okay i might eat something uh, which has sand maybe a sandwich so we say yes or no right we say yes or no so in that way we have to find this answer i know that it, it's not that much clear this particular option i believe right we are talking about the protective food can you see over here this is a protective food it's if it's not a protective food we say it gives energy yeah it gives energy uh ruchi you have to check your email address then bachche on the mails you will have it yes manvi manvi and aisha i can see your messages ayush i can see your messages also i can see the answers everyone very good i can see you voting and let's end the poll and let's discuss this question so here we have right here we have the poll right so we know that x provides the energy x provide the energy uh aisha then you can help your friend that where they can get the anthe roll number aradhya sorry aradhya very good very good so x provide the energy everyone so let's read the statement x is formed in plants during the photosynthesis we have to pick the incorrect statement we know that plants produce glucose which gives the energy so this is definitely correct yes s z is essential for normal functioning of thyroid glands now z over here will be a inorganic substance right that actually helps very good then consumption of excess y can cause meramus right i'm sure you heard of this disease this is nothing but the deficiency of proteins which happens in smaller babies right smaller children ruchi then you have to contact the team bachcha then you will be able to get it very good aisha very good very good so option number b is definitely correct statement then let's read the z the last statement 
D helps, right? D sorry, Z helps in formation of hemoglobin in the body. Okay, how many of you know that we have iron in the hemoglobin? Yes. Ruchi, on the anthe page, right, there will be a help portion or contact us. You can go and contact there. Right? So, of course, the Z over here there is definitely in an inorganic substance which is iron and is helping in the formation of hemoglobin in the body. So, D is also correct. So, the incorrect statement which we have over here is the C option, right? It's the C option. So, this is correct answer. Very good and hemoglobin gives red color to our blood also. Very good. Parid, we don't know. Para, sorry, Paradhim, we don't know as of now. But we cover up all the concepts, Bachche. Very good, Suhani. Very good, Manmya. Very good, Manvi. Very good, Suzanne, Suhani, Som. Good, very good, everyone. So, yes, you all got it correct. Nice, Pranjal. Very good, Atul. Energy, we, we, we don't have menti, bache. Motivation by, very good, very good. Okay, everyone, on to the last question. Now, it's a difficult question. We will not have the polls now. We will not have the polls now. Let's understand the question first. Can you see over here what you see over here? Right, we see that we have these keys. So, basically, there are two statements. Right? We have one, sorry, A and B statement. We have to read statement and then we have to go down and we have three set of statement. One, two and three. So we have to match it with ease and then we have to pick the correct option. Okay? I'll, I'll okay, fine, this is fine. Okay. Thank you, uh, Manvi. Thank you. Everyone, are we clear? Now, full focus everyone. It's a very, very important question. Very important question. Quickly give me a thumbs up. Yes, and last question everyone and then we'll wind up our session. It has two. Dashrat means two important clues. Right? So, let's read this. It, the, it is a category as energy giving food. If we are looking for an energy giving food, we have to go to the category, sorry, we have to go to the group 2. See over here, these are energy giving food. Energy giving food are what? We know that we have carbs and then we have fats. Okay? Now, it is soluble in water and it is insoluble in water. Can you... Take a butter and mix it in water, yes or no? What do you think? If we, if we take a butter or a ghee, if we pour into the water, it will mix or it will not mix. No, right? So Q over here is what? It is fat. It is insoluble in water. So we cannot mix what, uh, the fat, right? So the insoluble in water, Q is fat. P is carbs. Are we clear? The P one is the carbs. Very good, Suhani. Very good, everyone. Very good. P1 is carb. P is carb and the Q is fat. Very good. Now, let's read the next statement. It is a category as a protective food. Okay, now this will protect us. So, what are we left with? Vitamins and minerals. So, over here, right, let me change the pen color. Right, over here I'll be using green. See, this one we are looking. It is needed for the clotting of the blood. Can you tell which protein is needed for the clotting of our blood? Vitamin? Very good, Suhani. Very good. Vitamin K is R. Right? And it helps in the formation of hemoglobin. Just now we have discussed it's iron, right? So, S is the R. Based upon this, now we have to pick the correct statement. Right? Let's read the correct statement, everyone. Q, Q over here could be glucose. We know that Q is fat. So, it cannot be glucose. Yes. So, that option number A is incorrect. 
Yes, then we have option C, deficiency of R cause oyster paralysis in adults and deficiency of S causes goiter. This is absolutely incorrect. Right? Oyster paralysis is something to relate to with the bones and vitamin K has no relation to it. Then we have option D, P which is carbon di sorry, which is carbohydrates, B a butter, we know that it's not. So the only correct option is over here, that is B. Deficiency of iron causes anemia and of course it can cause the symptoms like pale body, color, right and of course body fatigue, no energy. With that we are done and option number B is the correct answer. Thank you so much. What are carbs? Kanti carbs are the food that provides the energy. It, inclu in, it, it includes the glucose, right? That gives us so much of amount of the energy. Yes, I'm so proud of you everyone. We have been studying for a one hour and you did, you stayed with us and you participated in. Pale body means, uh, Aradhya, that it, it looks yellowish, right? It looks very drained out. See, we have blood, right? We have blood, so we look very pinkish. If the blood is not there, we look a little bit pale. Okay? Yes, yellowish. Yes, everyone, with that, we are done. And I'm so happy that you all stayed till the end. I hope that you've enjoyed the class, right? And I hope that you have noted down all the important points that we have discussed. I hope that you have hit the like button for the video. Please don't forget to share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. It means lots to us. Yes, thank you so much everyone. Share with your friends who are preparing for the Olympiad examination. If you feel that if I missed any of your doubts, please write your doubts in the comment section below. I will be replying to it. Why our blood is red only because uh, Tejo of the presence of the hemoglobin. Right, hemoglobin is present and it gives the red color to our blood. Yes, okay everyone. Just in case if I missed any of a doubt, please feel free to write in the comment section. I will reply. On that note everyone, I'll say bye bye. My name is Ankita and we'll meet really very soon. Till, till that time, take care of yourself and keep on learning with Baijus. Lots of love everyone. Bye bye.